Hey everybody, it's Maxwell Carlisle again. I normally do reviews on, you know, guitars and pedals and amps and that kind of stuff, basically music equipment. But today I'm going to do a review of Ingvar J. Malmsteen's Relentless Memoir, the uh, autobiography that he just uh, published, um, or he just what just came out. It came out a few weeks ago. <coughs> Excuse me, as I'm making this video. And, uh, yeah, I got it, um, you know, I was looking forward to it, I'd heard it was coming out for a while, I know he's been working on it for a while, and I got it, read it, and, uh, it's great, I totally recommend you get it, I totally recommend you buy it and read it, and, um, <clears throat> just to give you an overview, obviously it's an autobiography, it's written by him, and, uh, most of the book... I shouldn't say most of it, but a lot of the book deals with his early career and the process of him coming, you know, from Sweden to America and, uh, you know, throughout the 80s, just basically the development of his career as a guitarist and that kind of thing. And, you know, the other stuff that was going on uh, in the music scene at, at the time. And then it goes into, uh, of course, goes into the early 90s and the transition from uh, you know, the, basically the changes in the music scene that were happening, you know, the transition from the 80s, 70s style rock that was prevalent, you know, to the whole, you know, the whole grunge thing happened and, you know, the musical taste changed and everything. And so basically, um, but of course that was only in America that it changed, which a lot of people forget about. But so basically his touring uh, and his success kind of transferred, it shifted in like the mid 90s from the US over to other countries in particular Japan so anyway um, yeah so obviously the book talks about things like that uh, in the later chapters of the book he talks a lot about just his overall views on on music and inspiration and you know su being successful in the music industry and that kind of stuff um, which is more just his, you know, his personal views and his personal opinions on, on some things and, you know, answering questions that people have always asked him. Um, but definitely as far as uh, his personal history, most of the book focuses on his early career. Um, there are, you know, it's a little bit, you know, like when I saw the, um, the God Bless Ozzy Osbourne documentary, it's kind of like you watch it and you're like, wow, that was great, but what about the rest of it? You know, it's like there's no way that, um, you know, you can fit Ingve's career into a book which is like, I don't know, it's like, you know, 250 pages or something like that. <coughs> Excuse me. And it's, uh, like I said, I'm not really complaining about that, but there are a lot of things that were kind of skipped over um, or just left out. I mean, he doesn't talk at all about... Um, he doesn't talk at all really about his albums in the 2000s. Um, he talks, to, you know, he talks about, um, you know, he gets up to like alchemy. And I think he mentions, once he mentions War to End All Wars. And that's towards the end of the book. He says, he says, he says he's, excuse me, he says he's talking about, uh, you know, remixing that album because he really liked some of the songs that were on it. But it had production issues, and uh, obviously, if you're an Ingve fan, you know that that's true. So, um, but yeah, he doesn't talk about uh, you know his work with uh, Doogie White. Like um, he just he kind of skips over that stuff. He skip, skips over a lot of stuff in the '90s. Doesn't even say Mike Mascara's name once at all, uh, which is kind of interesting. Although he does talk about the Seventh Sign album and uh, Magnum Opus talks a lot about his Concerto Suite uh, project, of course, which he performed with the Japanese Philharmonic, and uh, other things like that. So, you know, I personally would have liked to have, you know, been able to read a little bit more about some of those other projects and some of those other albums that he was into, because he talks mostly about, like, Rising Force. He talks about a lot about the Alcatraz al album, uh, No Parole for Rock and Roll. He talks a lot about, you know, his first few albums, Rising Force, and trilogy and marching out um 
talks a lot about Odyssey, mostly because um, it, it was really not a very happy time for him, and, and he uh, had a lot of personal problems going on, and, and that uh, personal issues going on at that time, and stuff uh, with working, uh, stuff about working with Joel and Turner, which he wasn't very happy with. Um, so he's really pretty down on that album, and just that kind of that sort of era in his career in general he doesn't have a lot of uh, good things to say about it but yeah so anyway I, and I don't want to give away the whole book for you I mean obviously it's history and, and some of it you probably will already know but uh, it's very you know it's entertaining I mean it's, there's a lot of funny parts in it and um, him kind of talking about you know the reputation that he developed and uh, sort of Ingve stereotypes, if you will, and talking about, uh, you know, he talks a lot about the uh, p different people he worked with through his career, he talks a lot about, you know, managers, um, you know, and the fact that he really, he never had much of an interest until just recently in the kind of the business side of his career, and how that led to a lot of problems with him. Um, throughout you know, most of his early history, he talks a lot about his, you know, struggle with alcohol and how that affected his work and the relationships he had with other people he worked with um, and that kind of stuff. But it's, I mean, like I said, it's a great book to read if you have any interest in Ingve. I mean, you can't, you can't not get it. You know, it's great. It's easy to read for whatever that's worth. And uh, very interesting, very funny, a lot of insight into stuff, a lot of, you know, just like little crazy stories, stuff that you never imagined, like his his drummer and his bass player, like driving his car off a cliff in like the early 80s and stuff like that. And let's see here. I'm looking at my notes to make sure I don't miss anything. Oh yeah, like his first record company, turned out the people who owned the company were like embezzling a bunch of money and they got like raided by the police or something and he got, he like, Somebody called him on the phone and he got all of his equipment and the master tapes and stuff. Like he got out just in time before the cops arrived and like busted the whole place. And Anyway, really amazing stuff like that. So anyway, Angry Jane Malmsteen's Relentless, a memoir. I highly recommend it. Check it out. Rock on. <laughs>